Yep. Okay. Oh. Well, I'm glad that was the last test. So we're doing it again, and with lucky number 13, checking out a ton of different motion sensors because really, to be honest, you can't really have a true smart home without some motion sensors to have automated lighting. So we're gonna run it through the paces. We'll have all the little tests and everything done kind of like we did before, but of course we're doing more. So let's get to it and check it out. So we're gonna run this one a little different than the previous motion sensor video. We're gonna run through the test at the beginning and that way you can just see all the good stuff and if you really give a crap and you wanna hang out and watch all the cool stuff with the hands on the sensors, well, you can check out that too. Otherwise, you can just hit the markers and jump to the outro and check out all the buoyant people that have likes at the end of my outros. So to set the stage, most of these are gonna be Zigbee sensors except for that one Shelly sensor that is Wi-Fi. And you say, well, why did I choose a lot of Zigbee sensors? Well, that's what I use a lot for battery powered stuff in my smart home. And you know, Zigbee does work with a lot of different devices, whether you're using Home Assistant, Smart Things, even just straight up Amazon Echoes, if they support the Zigbee one, I think that's like the fourth generation ones that have that support built in. There's all kind of other different systems that just support Zigbee and as well as most of these sensors, you can find them all across the world or you can even order them from AliExpress or whatever it may be because of the Zigbee standard uses 2.4 gigahertz. I did a couple different tests with some of them lower down on my fine handcrafted painstakingly built little shelves that I did for testing all the sensors. And yeah, I do have nice cans. I, then I found some sensors didn't do too well at that waste level. I mean, I, I was trying to say, hey, if you're gonna have them on a dresser or a counter or a bookshelf or something like that. And some of them did okay. Some of them not so okay. So then I went and did like I did last time. I said, hey, let's put them up higher. And that's when I went and got the ladder put them all up there and surprisingly some sensors did well and then some sensors not so well and so it screwed up some and some sensors did well on both but again you'll just see on the test and that's why I did all these different tests so you could pick what would be the better fit for your home because not everyone's home is the same and the placements and the links and everything and well you that's the whole point of this deal so well Let's get on with it. I'm rambling enough already. Well, I'll just say that really doing this test, that Philips Hue just knocked it out of the park again. And that Philips Hue Outdoor, insane how much that thing would pick up and just the view it would pick up is just nuts. I mean, it's back down to exactly you get what you pay for. And surprisingly enough, that central light one did do a great job as well. I know I did like that Linkine one before. I still like the Linkine one. It just has a great price ratio for what you get. It's not that expensive of a sensor and yet it works pretty well. Now there's that new Aquaria P1. I was really hoping it would do better since it had more of, you know, you could configure things and change the sensitivity and now you could change the timeouts and it just had some weirdness to it at times. And I, I, I'll just let the test just, you know, speak for itself. People told me about the Shelly one being, you know, hey, it's the best thing. And then someone are like, no, it's a piece of crap. Well, I just didn't like the Shelly too much. I mean, it is an expensive sensor. It's a big honking sensor as well. Um, but I, yeah, I'm just gonna probably stick to some of my smaller little Zigbee sensors. 
and still that Phillips Hue is just gonna knock it out the park. But there's still some good ones on there and well, we'll just let the test speak for themselves. And of course you can find all the links to all the stuff down below. If you do or don't like, or you have some other ones or whatever, leave us a comment down below. I'd definitely like to hear about it, any other sensors and you know, especially if they are in that local control range and not stuck in the cloud because that just sucks. So this is the newer model of the Hughes sensor. They pretty much look the same. I mean, you can easily get them mixed up because they're pretty close to be the same, except just a little bit of branding difference on the back. So I wanted to see kind of this, you know, this was one of my favorites before was the Hughes sensor, except, you know, not favorite on cost, but uh, you get what you pay for in this realm so they did change up a couple things i saw with the mount but it's still a magnet mount pretty cool you know i was able to even have the magnet stick to the little can and whatnot so definitely the same uh, it's got triple a batteries inside there's two triple a's pretty cool sensor i do like this sensor it has lots of features to it now, one I did add to it, of course, was, well, the Philips Hue Outdoor one. This one has a cool little mount. There's a, it snaps in, and they even have another little piece that you can do with the corner mount, or you can put it in an outside or an inside corner, which is pretty cool. And these screws, once they do screw in, I was just looking at the batteries on the bottom, and I believe this is double A inside, not triple A, so that should last a little bit longer. And in my initial testing, this thing is stupid sensitive. And well, you can adjust the sensitivity in, especially in Zigbee to MQTT, I think you can do it maybe in ZHA, I'm not exactly sure. But pretty cool sensor, now it's not really meant for inside, but hey, if you wanna roll with it inside, well, go right ahead, I guess, if you don't have a significant other. The AEOTech, their line was from Smart Things, another pretty much fan favorite out there, but it does cost is a pretty penny as there and sometimes they're out of stock on Amazon. The one thing I don't like about it is the battery that you know you have to have this special CR2 battery on here, but hey, why not? I guess that's gonna last a little longer, but it's not, I would say not readily available you know i say that you can get some of these coin sales so definitely if you do get this one make sure you do have some cr2s on hand you never know when one might decide to just go out so it has a little sticky mount same thing it has a little magnet you know i've been playing with it you see exactly what it is this one was there's another mount thing and i have it in a box somewhere this is a mose sensor it's just a branded to you nothing special sensor um just run average run of the mill um this was another tuya branded i heard some people talking about this one and saying it worked well and not i didn't find it worked that great in some of my testing um same one again this is that third reality pretty decent little sensor you'll see in some of the tests this does have triple a batteries i do like the triple a option because you know you can throw some rechargeables or whatever you want pretty simple to put what you want in these guys the central light this is a new one it's pretty decent has some other little sensors to it i think like temperature and whatnot to it and it is a coin cell style you push the little button and the little door slides out so it is a toolless design that you can change the battery i do like that pretty cool and yeah it's just you know regular nothing else to say about it really and almost looks like the other one they're pretty similar but this one is the if i say the name right conky or Con conkey or i don't know i always screw up names 
Now this one has some limitations on the Zigbee channel it can use. So do pay attention. I think, and I'll put a graphic up there because it only uses so many different, like three or four Zigbee channels. I believe the ZLL channels, but you probably should be using it anyway if you watched any of my videos. Well, except for the very first one on Unraid. This one's back, the AGS Home. Again, another two year rebrand style because so you'll probably find this and some other brands it's just the same form factor and yeah this was a big honker because it does three triple a batteries so and but it does have an on off switch so uh, nah, if you like that bigger sensor now another newcomer i believe i do thank caleb for sending this to me and because I don't have an Ikea nearby that I can get one. This is that Ikea Zigbee sensor. And, and the cooldown time is stupid long on this thing. And you'll see I get tired of it in the video. And we just get tired of waiting on it because the three minute cooldown just takes forever. And I can't find any way to change it. If you know a way to change the cooldown, do let me know down in the comments down below. And I do appreciate it. Now, one of my fan favorites, except for the stupid branding everywhere on it. But I guess if you could just take some acetone again. And this was that Lenkine one. I did pretty decent job and the price is you know still good another newcomer is the this is the aquaria p1 i believe it's the new style one and it does have adjustable cooldown and adjustable sensitivity and i did set this one to high and i set the cooldown i think to 30 seconds which is pretty cool they don't have that long cooldown i didn't like that before on the previous model now this one does have two coin cells in it. Now you can see based on the older one, it's just a little bit taller. Otherwise it's pretty much gonna look the same. You know, the branding is on the face and not the top. And well, I don't know. You'll see in some of the tests, I'm just, I'm on the fence of maybe it's height or it definitely needs some tweaking to get this guy right it does come with a little base thing for it as well so you can get that perfect angle but hey maybe once you get it dialed in you won't have some of the issues that i ran into now i didn't run into any of the sticky zigbee issues that i have because i believe they're using the newer zigbee supposed 3.0 in this model but hey we'll see now, one I got asked about to use was, hey, Travis, why didn't you use the Shelly in your little Roundup? It's a decent sensor. Well, it's kind of expensive. And now this one's Wi-Fi, but it does not sleep much, basically. And I, now the one thing, it does fit the bill, even being Wi-Fi and like some other Wi-Fi sensors, it's not stuck in the cloud. So it does have a local interface and you can hit it locally and you can even do the MQTT thing if you want to, but we just connected it straight using the Shelly integration and home assistant. And it is rechargeable with a micro USB on the bottom and it did kind of mixed on what I saw so far. So I don't know if it really can say it stands up to the price and it's rather large. I mean, I call this one large, and it, but it's meant for outside. So I understand the size. And even by some standards, the hue indoor is kind of large, but it has a weird size to it so i don't know you pick what you may want well <laughs> Sure. 
What you doing, Owen? Dragging us? Yep. You figured it out? Yeah. I'm so high. You're so high? <laughs> I'm so tall. What you been doing to get so high? Oh, the rock? No, I'm getting lower. You should stay off the rock, Owen. Why? Huh? Why? Because it gets you high. It's better that way. Oh, it's better that way? Yeah. Oh. Does your mama get high? We're all in a big group. Hey, does your mama get high? Um, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm taller. Oh. Spin. Spin. I'm making this house some fun. Making this house some fun. <laughs>